Good evening from London. Actually, good evening from a gridlocked London. It's taken me one hour and 45 minutes to travel four miles from uh, West London to another part of West London because of all the strikes. 600,000 workers apparently were out today. Uh, when does this end? When does the misery for all those who aren't striking, who don't want barrel loads more cash in the middle of a cost of living crisis, when does this stop? When can normal people get back to work and go to work knowing it won't take them three days to get home? I just asked the question because it's incredibly annoying. And if the strikers think that we're all ending our day after days like this, thinking, well, you know what you must do, go out and support the strikers, they're living in cloud cuckoo land. Anyway, that's off my chest. It's been a torrid week for those who insist that cancel culture either doesn't matter or doesn't exist. First, Gary Lineker was mobbed and then suspended for his opinions about the government's migrant policy. Next, Fiona Bruce was denounced as an apologist for domestic violence over this. For a change, I'm not... I, I'm not blaming Boris Johnson or Stanley Johnson, actually, Ken. He was a wife beater, Stanley Johnson, on record. Um, OK, let me, just, let me just interview... I'm not, I'm not disputing what you're saying, but just so everyone knows what this is referring to... So Stanley Johnson's uh, wife spoke to a journalist, Tom Bauer, and she said that Stanley Johnson had broken her nose and, and she had ended up in hospital as a result. Stanley Johnson has not commented publicly on that. Friends of his have said it did happen, it was a one-off. Yes, but it did happen. Well, that was it. Fiona Bruce was directed to read a prepared statement for legal reasons. This kind of thing happens all the time, by the way, in live television. I'll occasionally have something I have to read which is just part of what you do as a live news presenter. If you think someone's going to make an inflammatory statement, you have something which can counter it. It's called you know, being fair, being reasonable about these things. Fiona Bruce didn't pass judgment. She didn't give a personal opinion. She read a BBC statement of context on legal advice that she was directed to do. But the righteous mob don't care about the nuances of these things. Members of Parliament said that she was disgraceful. Petitions circular demanding she be fired. Outraged keyboard warriors described her as sickening. This is Fiona Bruce we're talking about. And Refuge, the domestic violence charity that Fiona Bruce had represented with distinction for 25 years, dropped her like a rock. With both Fiona Bruce and Gary Lineker, the reaction was hysterical but entirely predictable. Ridiculous overreactions to words and opinions have become the norm in our society. Step out of line... One word out of line, you'll be vilified, shamed and censored until there are consequences. Till you get cancelled, ruined. As Lineker proved, it doesn't matter if you're left-wing, right-wing, white, black, old, young, rich or poor. And as Jeremy Clarkson proved in the aftermath of his ham-fisted joke about Meghan Markle, it doesn't make any difference if you issue a grovelling series of apologies. The mob doesn't care. And nor do the people who get the apologies. Meghan and Harry loved it. In that case, apologise for everything else you've ever said and written, was their response. My question is simply this. Do we actually want to live in this kind of world? A world in which everybody has to walk around with their buttocks clenched in terror of being castigated for something they've said or written, of losing their, their job, their livelihood, their reputation. A world where Fiona Bruce, and trust me on this, one of the nicest and most respected people in the news business on British television is absurdly condemned as some kind of wicked pariah. We used to talk about 15 minutes of fame. That was the Andy Warhol thing. Now everyone gets their 15 minutes of shame, and the lucky ones survive it. Many don't. And I make no apology for loudly and repeatedly calling out this madness for what it is. Well, joining me now is talk to the contributor Esther Kraku, writer and commentator Larissa Kennedy, and domestic abuse survivor Rachel Williams. Well, let me start with you, Rachel Williams. I was led to believe by the howling mob that anyone who'd suffered domestic abuse who watched Question Time was traumatised by what happened, that they watched what Fiona Bruce said and felt instant trauma over what they themselves had gone through. Did you feel that? I did not, Piers, and I can honestly agree with you that Fiona Bruce is a great advocate for the cause. Um, I was fortunate to meet Fiona Bruce at Buckingham Palace last year and she gave me a big hug um, and I could tell she was really supportive of the cause. And I think she's just been absolutely crucified um, on social media and in the press for repeating a comment that somebody else had made. 
Right, and the truth is, from a legal perspective, if you're a journalist, you have the allegations that were made by Stanley Johnson's uh, ex-wife, which appeared in this book, and he's never responded publicly. He's just given his version through friends, and that's what she was summarising as a right of reply, uh, because what else could she possibly do? And for that, she had to give up a 25-year role as an ambassador for refuge, which I, th I think shames refuge, frankly. Uh, let me go now to Larissa Kennedy. Larissa, do you really feel that Fiona Bruce had to be treated this way? I think when we're talking about how people are being treated, Fiona Bruce herself chose to step down from this role, given the response from both beneficiaries of refuge and from other, you know, people who have experienced domestic violence, but also other forms of gendered violence who felt hurt by the comment. And that's not to say that this is some sort of cancelling or whatever we want to call it. It's rather to say that, you know, I, I take pride in this role, but I also mean that with when coming with pride comes responsibility. What did she and do wrong? What did she do wrong? What did she do wrong? OK, let's unpack it. Even if you believe that her everything that she said was absolutely correct in the fact that she had to allow a right of reply. I think no one would have had an issue up until the point in the sentence at which she said it was a one-off. Because the framing itself implies some sort of diminishing of the she, hang form on, of Hang attack. on, she didn't, no other, hang on, on Larissa, hang on, on that, point, on that point, on that point, Larissa, hang on. Look, Fiona Bruce didn't say it was a one-off. She said, this is what, this is, she said, she sentence. said that is what friends of Stanley Johnson have right, said yeah. by way of response, which, by the way, is entirely yeah, true. Well, well, hang on, if hang on, you don't want to hear this. Yeah. Let me finish. That's what friends of Stanley Johnson have told people, and that's been the only response he's given. She was, accurately, she was accurately giving the other side of this. She wasn't saying that is true or that is my opinion. She was simply giving a legal right to reply because that's what we do in this business. Which I was about to acknowledge and say that actually I think the fault lies with the person who wrote, who wrote that and who gave it to her to say, because in fact not acknowledging that there would be backlash from stating it in that way is ridiculous. I don't know how anyone can work in this business and not understand that for someone to say one-off sounds as though you're calling any one-off form of violence when it comes to gendered violence and domestic abuse null and void. And, and how, and anyone, okay, uh, well, okay, again, again, attack, again, if Larissa. I my, please, if I hit you in my car, are you going to say, oh, but it was one-off? I broke my arm, but it was one-off. Well, he broke look, someone's well, nose. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let, let, me, let, me, uh, let me unpack what you just said. Here's the point. I don't know the answer, nor does Fiona Bruce. We don't know how many times Stanley Johnson may or may not have hit his wife, right? All we know is what she has said, and he's not responded publicly, other than to tell people off the record through friends it was a one-off. That might be true. We don't know. It's, it's a journalist's job to try and find out, but short of actually having hard evidence to corroborate that, she did what I think any news journalist would do in that situation and simply gave the other side from his point of view and said that he's told people it was a one-off. That is the situation that we know about. Now, that may be lies, and he might have been a repeat offender, and certainly his, uh, his wife said that, but we don't know that for, for a fact. Why should we act as judge and jury against Stanley Johnson in that circumstance? I'm curious. We shouldn't, but the phrase one-off implies some sort of judgment there. Because, as it you say... It, but it wasn't Fiona Bruce that it said is, it. Is, if someone had... Piers, if I had hit you with my car and I hadn't made a public statement about it and someone else had said, oh, but it was only a one-off, would you feel comfortable that the implication is that they are? I'm not someone who goes around hitting people in my car? And that's a far less serious form of abuse that we're talking about and far less emotive in many cases. It's about being cautious with language. And this isn't about cancelling. It's about saying, I'm going to take a step back from this, have a little think about how I approach this in future. Well, that isn't what happened. Go back that isn't what happened. Future. What happened is that so Refuge, who she'd worked... Well, hang on, let me finish. Refuge, who she'd worked for for 25 years... And we've just heard from Rachel that Fiona meant this, you know, this was a, a cause important to her, that she dedicated 25 years of her life to promoting a charity that combated domestic violence. Nobody would do 
would want to do less to trivialise this issue than Fiona Bruce. She's proved that over 25 years. And she read out a short statement on legal advice simply giving the other side from what Stanley Johnson had told people was his position about what his wife had said. And for that, she's had to leave refuge as an ambassador and they dumped her to the wolves in a statement which I thought was, was shatteringly uh, cowardly and pathetic. Let me go to Esther. Here's my problem with this. It's the glee with which everyone seemed to want to take down Fiona Bruce. Yeah. I mean, they make it impossible for people to exist in public life. Anyone who knows what a proper journalist's job is knows that they have to give the other side of the story, mm. but remain impartial. With As it. best you know it. Exactly. And she didn't pass any judgment. She didn't say this is right or wrong. This person, this, the, the person that she was speaking to, called him a wife beater live on air. Nobody mm. said anything in defense of, of Stanley Johnson or right. not in defense of him. But somehow she reading a legal statement, which actually protects the BBC from libelous uh, lawsuits. Yes. Somehow that makes her the enemy. And I think these people don't understand. They make it very difficult for anyone to exist in public life because they hold people to ridiculous standards. I think if you're going to take down Fiona Bruce over something like this, nobody is safe from this Absolutely. Mob. Nobody is safe. And then that's when people feel more incentivized to be in Sindhuri because they said, if I can't get away from it, I might as well just play that game. And then you raise tensions because people feel the need to just play fire with fire. And but there is a kind of glee, isn't there? We saw it with Gary Lineker as well from people on the right. And if, it had been, if Lineker had been supporting... You know, being a right-wing commentator yeah, presenting sport who decides, say he's Matt Letizia, right, giving the other side, I think it would have been all the people defending the Nika would have been yeah. paying for his blood. So it works both ways, this, this mob mentality. But Lineker, the glee with which Conservative MPs and Conservative pundits and so on would... would trying to destroy his career. It was, it was, well, they, they'd have a hard time doing that. It was, just, it, was, it was sort of you know, painful to watch. In a, in a democratic society, I felt, painful to watch someone being so self-righteously condemned for his opinion when all he was trying to do, albeit, I think, in a misguided way, the way he phrased this, um, all he was trying to do was stand up for refugees. That was his crime. All that Fiona Bruce was trying to do was, was get some balance in the middle of a debate because that's her job as the moderator of question time. It's just to make sure there's always a right of reply if someone's not there to a serious allegation that's made. Well, we're, we're in a situation now where the children are in charge. There are no adults in the room. So whenever someone feels offended or they feel slighted mm. or they don't agree with someone, they happen to have the loudest voice and we have to go in the direction that they, they want to go in. And the inmates are running the asylum. There's, I don't agree with, with what Gary Lineker said, but I, in, a, in the spirit of free speech, which conservatives ironically champion, yeah. I don't believe he should have lost his job or even have, should have been taken off air. And with Fiona Bruce, this is even more ridiculous yeah. because there was no offence given, quite frankly. These people are making it impossible for rational spaces where people people can speak freely to exist. And that's going to have a detrimental effect on society. Right, and I think, um, Rachel, just coming back to you, I, I do think that the person who should be held accountable is surely Stanley Johnson, right? If, when he gives interviews again now, he should be vigorously pressed on this by journalists about exactly what the truth is, and he should be made to say his version of events on the record and be rightly challenged. I mean, that, to me, seems to be who should be targeted in this way, not Fiona Bruce... I absolutely agree with you, Piers, because what has happened now, we've taken the focus off the perpetrator, you know, whether it was a one-off or not, um, as Fiona said, and she would have known, she knows about domestic abuse and perpetrators, um, and it's not just a one-off. So what has happened now in the media, we've taken the focus off the perpetrator, as per usual, and focusing on something else, which is Fiona. And like I said, I support Fiona, and I know she would not have said that um, through her own uh, opinion. That is just something she had to say. Oh, and also, can I just say as well, you know, you said about the government, shame on, like, Fiona. No, shame on the government when they don't sort their magistrates and judges out in court. When I had to go to a victim last week because she'd been strangled by her perpetrator so ferociously, her neck was black, but yet he walked from court because the magistrate knew nothing really about domestic abuse and violence and gave him a 12-month custodial mm. sentence suspended for two years. So shame on the government there. Well, I'm, I'm equally as angry as you about that as I was about the poor boy that we interviewed yesterday who was wrongly tarnished as being a rapist by a total fantasist. Um, and she ends up getting an eight-year sentence for ruining so many lives. He would have got 22 years, his lawyers had told him, had he been found guilty of all the charges against him. Larissa, th this wider issue of, of cancel culture, there is a feeling that the woke left, and I, I think you identify as one, um, but you can correct me if, if you like, um, 
that the woke left take a sort of weird glee in cancelling people whose views you don't share. Do you think that's right? And do you think it's healthy for democracy? Absolutely not. I don't understand where this idea that cancel culture uh, is somehow aligned with the left exists when so many leftists are supportive of transformative justice, which is all about taking time for education, for relearning, for unlearning things, um, and then coming back into things. And that's why when we're saying that Fiona Bruce has taken a step back, maybe she took a minute to think, why have I received so much backlash? Who may I have harmed or perhaps not? No, and she didn't. She got told by refuge she, she couldn't be an ambassador anymore. That's what oh, happened. Sorry, on what grounds are you saying that, Piers? I know that for a fact. You know that? Sorry, can you bring a source or something? No, don't I'm need just, to. I'm I, just telling you it's, this it's true. This isn't all about your I don't name my sources, opinion, so what's the point it's telling it's you my source? No, so, I'm not telling you my okay, source, but so I can you tell you source, that's what, that is what happened. But... OK, so per peers, that's what happened. But per the public reports in the news about what happened, uh, Fiona Bruce has, uh, has decided to take a step back. Yeah, let me and tell you, me, Larissa, I'm not going to I'm not going to teach you how to suck journalistic eggs at this formative stage of your burgeoning career. However, mm -hmm. every time a public figure involved in a scandal says they've suddenly decided to take a step back, it's very rarely their idea. It's usually somebody else's Okay, idea. and if you'd like to be less patronising, that would be far preferred, <laughs> given that we're actually talking about gendered violence um, in, this, in this segment. So I apologise for being patronising. So as, but... as I was saying, I think yeah. this is an opportunity for learning and growth. Yeah, so I think it could be a positive thing. It's not about taking it with glee. It's about seeing the, the bright side of this. I would love to see the bright side. Uh, good to talk to you, Larissa. Thank you very much indeed. Rachel, thank you very much.